Uh, hey, that's, that's even worse, isn't it? <laughs> no, no, it's perfect. Love it, love it. Uh, and I was just how gonna are, say, oh, go ahead. Sorry. I was just gonna say, how are things there? Are you guys all dying? Um, I mean, <laughs> I, I'm okay. Uh, I think there are the numbers have started to go up a little bit, so yeah uh not great but i don't think it's anywhere near anything like new york or california so we're like spread out yeah yeah what about you how's colorado yeah our numbers are spiking right now oh my god and the whole damn state's on fire so we're having a good year here too so (laughs) yeah definitely not armageddon or anything just uh a a plague and natural disaster but it's you know what for you guys are making beautiful sunsets for us though because we oh, see good. like the remnants of the fire so it's really nice really perfect rad. well i'm glad that it only took millions of acres to do that for you <laughs> that's the ingredient for a magical forest. <laughs> <laughs> yes exactly that's the ingredient for a magical sunset is just millions of acres of forest who knew who knew perfect all right. Well, everybody, welcome to a comedy advice podcast. My name is Stefan Satani, and I am your host. Joining me today is a very special guest. He was the winner of season four's last comic standing on NBC. He has five specials that have been released on Showtime, Netflix, Hulu, Comedy Central, and Amazon. Everybody, please welcome Josh Blue. Well, howdy. Hey. How's it going? Good, good. I, God, I just feel, I feel important reading your bio, so I don't know what it's like to be you. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's a little surreal, like, oh man, I did all that? <laughs> God, it's amazing. And you've been doing comedy, I mean, you won Last Comic Standing in 2006. You've been doing comedy for, what, 20 years? Yeah, maybe not quite 20, but coming up on it for sure. That's, that's amazing. Crazy. Yeah, that is crazy. And I've seen a lot of your specials. I just saw the most recent one, Broccoli, which is oh, yeah. brilliant, which I want to talk about in a second. Oh, but thanks, I man. wanted to ask, what got you into comedy in the first place? How did you start drugs. blossoming? Just lots of drugs. <laughs> <laughs> nah, was, um, you know, I started in college, actually. I just... Uh, Somewhere got it in my head that I could do stand up and I, I tried it on an open mic on campus, you know, uh-huh. open mic for poetry and music. And then I went up there and did my thing and it just hit really well. And uh, I just kind of never looked back, man. I just kept doing it and doing it and it just kept building and building and building and building. And here we are. Five oh, later. my God. That's that's amazing. And I was just going to ask, too, on the open mic, were you the only comic or oh, were there yeah, others? Uh-huh. Definitely only comic. So, <laughs> you know, it was uh, – I had no frame of reference, you know. If you go to another open mic where there's comics, you're like, oh, okay, that's kind of how you do it. That's what you do. Me, it was just like, all right, you're in between the uh, beat poet and the uh, songwriter. <laughs> sing the song about coming out <laughs> oh my god uh, and I That's up a, there yeah. like what's up fuckers <laughs> <You know? laughs> That's hilarious. And speaking of speaking of comedy, music, etc., I know, and you talked a little bit about being friends with the lead singer of the Lumineers, and I had heard yeah. that you also open for them at times. Yeah. I was going to ask, maybe you got your experience early on at the open mic, but what is it like when people go to a concert and they're not really expecting comedy to happen? Is that more of a well, challenge? Yeah, traditionally music and comedy is a tough uh, combo because if you're mm-hmm. there to see the band, you don't give a shit about the comic. But um, <laughs> he, the singer Wesley is gracious enough that he'll actually come out himself on stage and introduce me. So by him coming on stage and saying, hey, this is my friend, give him some uh, respect and attention, it really buys me a, a ton of, uh, of uh, leeway, you know, a ton of just, um, 
it gives me a window to prove myself. And then, you know, you you listen to my first two jokes, you're hooked in, and then I take you from there. Nice, nice. Okay, so you aren't you aren't trying to mess with the audience and then come out with a guitar and be like, oh, you guys thought I was gonna play music. <laughs> No, nah, man, uh, you know, it's already hard enough to get them on your side in that situation because, you know, everybody's standing up and, and you know, it's just a different setting than uh, a stand-up show would be. But it works and it's so fun, you know. Oh, that's awesome. That's really cool. I didn't think about that, but yeah, everybody is kind of standing up and maybe they're in the mood to like rock back and forth, but, um, yeah. you know, it, if if you get them in, you get them hooked with the jokes. That's awesome. Well, good. Yeah, and and you know, I always tell them I don't want to do more than twenty minutes because the new people that come in to get seated or to to come in the venue are are unaware of what, what they're walking into. You know. Yeah. I give myself yeah. a twenty minute set and rip it, and, and yeah. So. Nice, nice. I wanted to also talk about your special, Broccoli, that was released July 21st of this year, which was some yeah. much needed laughter for a lot of quarantined folks. But I wanted to first just say your album, the special was brilliant. I laughed oh. all the way through, as well as the audience. It was just funny oh, all man. the way around. I yeah, also, man. I also want to call you, I think I might crown you as the come the callback king because throughout the special it was just like from little ricky to going and, and stopping for and looking for a tree to to set your roots or the hooker on the roof it was just all these beautiful jokes at first and then just callback 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 and I, I lo I'm a huge fan of callbacks, but to see so many so brilliantly placed. And then there were some that were like, you placed them way ahead or way forward. And you were like, do you guys remember that? The ice sculpture? You remember that? <laughs> and it made it even funnier. So I wanted to ask, did, I mean, it seems like, do you just go and write your sets or write the special? And then you're like, you know what? This is a good place for the comeback. This is a good place. This is a good place. And you just put them as like cherries on top at the end. Or how do you do it? Nah, man, I've never written anything down. So I just um, go on stage and I tell the jokes. And then, you know, before the pandemic, I was doing 200 shows a year. So that's pretty much a lot of shows every week. So it was just a constant um, morphing of, of the set. So, And then each time I do something new that works, Somehow I'm able to retain it and then uh -huh. do it the next time and do it the next time. And, and it just keeps building and building and building. So callbacks, wow. um, you know, they just come in literally on stage. Like they'll just pop in my head when I, I'm there. And then if it works, then, then I go. Yeah, I always, uh, I always pride myself on my callbacks. So I, I really, I really love doing them. And I feel like it's a fun way to, um, you know, just, I don't understand why more comics don't do them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, maybe they have bad memory. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that could be it. But you, I know you talked to, just talked about it right now of doing 200 shows a year. And I think I heard on a, an interview, you were saying not one of them is the same. And I guess that makes sense with if you're 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 kind of just yeah. constantly using it as like, a training ground slash use, you know, using what you learned from the last time and key and building on foundations and then callbacks. It seems like an yep. awesome place to just continue to nurture and foster your comedy. And, right. uh, and I don't, <laughs> then I don't get bored of it. And, and if it's like, um, you know, if it's constantly changing and constantly, um, you know, it, it's called the routine for a reason because you do the same jokes over and over again. But when I, leave it up to like the moment or feeling the vibe in the room and then okay they need this joke now they need this joke now obviously there's a lot of um um like when you have callbacks you definitely have to do the first joke first and do the <laughs> yeah. callback later i've done that before where i called back to a joke i never did that's how oh no <laughs> yeah that I was like, what happened? And then my girlfriend was like, you didn't even set that joke up. I was like, uh. Oh, no. 
Oh man. Well, it happens to the best of us, but I, I was also going to say, I loved, it just seemed like you have, when I watch comedy specials and I'll have some guests on here that have specials, they might just be on one theme or they might have one pattern of joke sets with some sprinkled in, but you had the callbacks, you had one liners, great one liner about judge Judy. I'm not going to divulge too much <laughs> because people, there's going to be a link in the show notes. You should watch this special. Oh, it's please so good. Do, yeah. Um, you're also your vegan girlfriend when you were <laughs> talking about making yeah. a joke for her. Yeah. Um, but I, I also really <laughs> liked where you were able to, and I feel like you do such a good job of this, of like understanding the perspective of others where, and one thing that I also found really nice was in the special, you were saying, oh, you know, some people, they say that I talk too much about cerebral palsy on stage but I'm, you, you bring it back with some like four or five jokes to make your point. But you're like, I talk from the perspective of someone with cerebral palsy, which I think is totally beautiful right. and something that is when I'm encouraged to write or when I see people perform on stage, their perspective is like what really hooks me into them. And I feel like you do such a good job of that throughout your jokes that I do totally agree with you. It's like from your perspective and that makes you like truly authentic and truly hilarious throughout the jokes that you make. Well, thanks. Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely, um, I'm speaking from a unique point of view, but I try right. to make it accessible to my audience and, and everybody has um, the same experiences in life. It's just a different story or path a lot of the time. So I was trying yeah. to make things that you you yourself can relate to. Maybe you don't have cerebral palsy, but you still have things that you have overcome or or, or have to deal with in your day to day life. Yeah, you know? and right. I've always just been brutally honest about my life. So if you watch my specials all in a row, you see like I'm telling you all the details of my life. You know, I'm not really these aren't just jokes made up. There's shit that really happened. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And it, it, it's been such an interesting life, too. I was listening to a couple other specials, and one you were talking about how you were born in Cameroon, and then yep. you spent a year later in Senegal, and that's where you really started to kind of um, look at some of the issues that there were in Africa of people, you know, like finding stuff like food and shoes and stuff. And yeah. you, it started to change your perspective. I also bringing it to the stage and, and jokes that I saw in Broccoli too, where you, <laughs> when you made jokes that are like, or my son is a great climber, my, his mom is Japanese. And then everyone's like, and you kind of anticipated, you knew the perspectives of people. And then you broke it down. You're like, yeah, half of you people were like, that's inappropriate. I don't know why, but that's inappropriate. And then the other half are like, <laughs> right. are Japanese good climbers? It just feels like you're so astute and yeah. you have such a good, um, not just grasp on your own perspective, but you kind of know what audience people, what audience is going to think and, and kind of drive it yourself to make it even more funny. So I think that right. takes- Self-awareness too of like how people see me and able to point that out and, and you know basically shove it down back down your throat <laughs> you know <laughs> if you're gonna have a preconceived idea of disability then i'm gonna force feed you your idea <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly uh i so i know you're gonna be here this week in phoenix arizona when yeah. was the last time you've been to phoenix uh probably last year usually i go there at least once a year it's one of my favorite uh venues the tempe improv is uh one of my first clubs that i was headlining in back in the day too so i have lots of history there oh uh, that's awesome that's really cool yeah, yeah temp tempe improv is a great place um and i was i was gonna say too i know that you were doing 200 shows a year with the pandemic the yeah. show's kind of stopped. I know things are opening up again, but I saw on your YouTube page that you were doing a little axe throwing. Um, I oh, think yeah. playing with the chainsaw. What have been your hobbies? What have you been doing to pass the time in lieu of doing shows? Well, I got two kids, so that definitely, you know, I went from being a touring comic to being a homeschool teacher, which I was 
ill prepared for. But uh, <laughs> oh no. Oh, um, man. you know, I've I've actually honestly been kind of enjoying the slowdown. Um, like I said, I've nice. been doing two hundred shows a year for sixteen years, so that's a uh, average of being on a plane every three days. So it's um a lot of travel. So oh, it's been God. nice just kind of um not having to get on a plane every other day and and uh i've been doing some zoom shows originally i hated the idea of those they're horrendous not very uh yeah. conducive to stand up but i just kind of told myself like this is the way right now this this is probably going to stick around for a while so quit bitching and 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 figure it out so now i don't mind doing zoom shows you just have to think of it like it's not like a stand-up show. It's just a different, a different entity. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It's kind of just like sex with a condom on. You don't really feel the laughter, but it's there. So yeah, it's still happening. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just not as fun for both parties, but it is. There, there's some sort of pleasure you can get out of it's it. Still a bit of mental pleasure, yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, Josh, I am so excited, as is the rest of Phoenix, to be seeing you this weekend. A link is going to be in the show notes for the tickets. We're going to go into the self-help portion of the podcast and give some advice. Perfect. But Perfect. I was gonna, I was gonna ask: Is there anything that you want to plug? Anything that you've got going on um, beyond the shows that you would like to share with my audience? Yeah, you know, I've just been really uh, putting a lot of work into my YouTube channel, which is just Josh Bluetube. So we start posting uh, regularly every week, and, and I got a ton of old clips. Like, I took a video with me, like, 10 years ago and recorded a ton of old shows. So we're bringing back some some gems and some heckler moments and stuff like that, which is really cool. And then I'm putting some more videos out, just, like, sketches and shit like that and then uh i love instagram that's probably my favorite form of social media and that's just josh blue comedy oh that's awesome that's really cool yeah awesome well let's go ahead and get into the advice josh i was going to ask are you a good advice giver are you oh hell yeah (laughs) perfect i thought so i had the feeling all right well we're gonna start before answering the questions by reflecting on an inspirational quote so I've got one here, but before I give mine, I was going to ask, I'd like to ask my guests if they have any inspirational quotes that help get them through their dark days. Oh, man. I mean, one of my favorites is Muhammad Ali says, it's hard to be humble when you're this good. <laughs> That's a great, great quote. I love that. All right. Perfect. We're going to move on to this quote that I've got. It's actually not by a person at all. It's by a robot. And the robot's name is Inspirobot. And what it does is it uses AI to take some of the wisest words known to man and just mash them together for a tasty little quote. All right. So this quote this week by Inspirobot, it says, the experience of being a decent human being can be a lot similar to being a contract killer. The experience of being a decent human being can be a lot similar to being a contract killer. Okay, so I mean, I think there's a lot we can extract from that quote. Uh, First off, I know that it it sends us to be like, what? But then I think Inspirebot might have a little bit of a point because if you're a contract killer, I feel like you have to be very professional. You have to be on time for your appointments, or else you're not going to kill it. You have to be accountable. So you have to kind of clean up know after your, your messes. <laughs> yeah, yes. You have to know your audience. Exactly. Because if not, um, bad things can happen. So I'm seeing a couple parallels here with the Inspire Black quote. Yeah. No, I think, I think for robot, it was dead on. Yeah, good job, Inspirebot. All right, now that we're inspired from Muhammad Ali and Inspirebot, we're going to go into some questions. This first one, it was found on Reddit from our fan, Patrick. Thank you, Patrick. It says, I love my girlfriend, but I hate kissing her. 
I honestly don't know what to do anymore. I love her and I don't want to lose her, but when she kisses me, I get grossed out. I don't think I will ever be able to tell her because I would never want to hurt her like that. It's just that every time she kisses me, it feels like all I can think about are greasy faces, how moist it is, and her breathing on me. Please help. Wow. That's a... Man, that's a, quite a pickle you're in there, bud. Uh, try making out with a dog for a while, and then, uh, <laughs> then you might appreciate how lovely your girlfriend is. You know what? That is actually pretty good. Sorry, I started to squeak there for a bit, but when I hear good advice, that's what happens. I'm I feel like, like squeak toy. All right. Yeah, <laughs> that's good advice. So I feel <laughs> like. <laughs> just like on the dog theme but if you go to something like just like you went to senegal and you thought you know what i have it great compared to the conditions that these people have so if you go and make out with a dog then make out with your girlfriend i feel like you're not gonna feel as bad because the dog or you could open you up to new opportunities if you like dog right. stuff but well you I think can probably you guess that your girlfriend's not licking her butthole <laughs> that's right. that's right yes exactly we don't we're assuming the girlfriend isn't that flexible and uses toilet paper and, or a bidet right. or a combination so i think Probably making the out dude with, has some ocd going or something man yeah that's what i think too i i think that you i mean maybe go see a therapist maybe um what he says greasy faces how moist it is and her breathing on me so maybe well, just maybe give her go some chlor like some um, clear cell. That's right. And, uh, maybe maybe a, a dry towel or something. To get that yes. moisture off. Be like, babe, I want to present some toys into our lovemaking. And here is a towel that dries off your greasy face and some acne medication. And that just revs me up. So then you can apply it to her. Her face will be dry and not so moist. Also, right. I, don't, I don't know if you're making out in a sauna, but just make sure you're, you're making out in a dry, arid place. I feel like that'll also help you out. Yeah, I mean, Phoenix, Phoenix is pretty dry, right? I mean, Oh, yeah. <laughs> Real, yeah, real so dry. Maybe, I don't have to worry about any moist faces here when I'm doing kissing. So, or maybe it it's just a drought-stricken land. You know, just just make out in drought areas. <laughs> yeah, maybe pay attention to the humidity each day and be like, babe, it's below thirty percent humidity. Let's get it on. So you could even just check up on the weather on where you're at, or go to that drought oasis where you can. Sure. Go like, no, I oh. agree. I, I'm. I agree. Or maybe just, um, I don't know, man, that, that's quite a dilemma. I mean, I, I have so many other questions, like, does the grossness stop at the kissing, or can you still have sex? Because that seems like there's a lot more moisture and grease and malt. <laughs> <laughs> that is oh god i didn't think about that yes and bad breath there might be some odors there too so i don't yeah. oh man yeah we got to have a talk with this guy or he's he's got to seek some help i think because uh yeah i think there's professional help maybe yeah, yeah or some okay. ecstasy and then you wouldn't care but oh yeah that's true if you take x this is a very rookie question but if you take ecstasy and you have sex can you have it again while not on ecstasy i'm sure it's been done that's true us humans we've we oh, found COVID. ways to have sex yeah oh bless you bless you um all right Thank i feel you. like we're gonna move on to the next and last question oh, i can't is, wait <laughs> this is how this is actually from Reddit as well, found from our fan, Cameron. Thank you, Cameron. It says, how do I tell my aunt I skated into a moving bus? The other day, I decided to skate down to Starbucks to get me a coffee. And on the way back, I turned across the road. And before I knew it, I crashed into the side of a moving bus. It snapped my board in half and left me on the floor. Uh, I got up and gathered my board and just walked back. When I walked back to check myself over, I had a huge bump on my head. I told my aunt and uncle I had fallen off my board on the pavement and my board had rolled on the ground and got run over by a bus. They said I could go to the doctor, 
but I don't know if the doctor will believe my story. What do I do? Well, maybe we could take it one step back and say, look both ways before you cross the road. I feel like I learned that one pretty young. Um, I know it's retrospective, but I feel like it could prevent further encounters with a bus and crashing into it. Yeah, I mean, maybe more spatial awareness in general. And then um, I don't know why you need to confess. I mean, I feel like they bought your story. Uh, that's it. true. That's true. I, mean, I think the doctor would buy your story too. Yeah, if or you tell him you were beat up by uh, by some, um, I don't know, you could tell him it was a mauling or a, have some fun with it, you know? You you could say your aunt and uncle if you don't like them. I don't know. Yeah, um, they don't believe do. my story, so they did it. They, yeah, it was my aunt uh, and uncle. They hit me in the same spot, so the bump grew especially big. Right. So oh, yeah, please, for sure. Please take them away. Yeah, but, I, I mean, you're right. I think the doctor will buy it. I don't think the doctor is going to be like, wait a second. This looks like a bus bump. This is not a yeah, sidewalk. Yeah, the doctor is there to fix you, not like judge your, I mean, your, where you got the injury from. That's right. And yeah. frankly, if you run into a parked bus, you kind of deserve that shit. So. I, I agree. I think there should be some sort of scarlet letter, maybe like a little school bus sticker that you should have right. that says, I ran into a parked bus. So Just please idiot. beware, beware of me. I, I, I kind of agree with that, Josh, because I feel like if you crash into buses, how many people have you accidentally ran into? Like how many things have you done in your life right. that have caused harm to others? I'm sure the bus is okay. Maybe there's a dent I mean, on the bus. bus. Is a, it's a pretty big vehicle to not see. That's huge. If it was like I bumped into a smart car, I might give you some slack, but right. a bus. That's like skateboarding into a broadside of a barn or something. <laughs> I didn't see it. That's actually our next question. I skated into a barn. No, I'm kidding. That is, that is the last question. Josh, thank you again for taking the time to join me talk a little bit about yourself, your shows, and give some hearty advice for these poor, poor actual souls that are out there somewhere. Poor sap. Yeah. Oh, man. But thank you again. One more time, because my fans, you know, they need things repeated twice. What have yeah. you got going on? Wh where can people find you? And, uh, you know, what do you want to plug? Again, uh, my YouTube channel, uh, just Josh Bluetube. And then... Uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter is all Josh Blue Comedy, and uh, I've really been enjoying that. And then, obviously, check out Broccoli and all my other specials, which are on Amazon Prime right now. Nice. And in Broccoli, you wear a especially fashionable shirt with a broccoli. Yeah. Is the plural, is the singular Broccolo? Broccolo? Anyway, you have a broccoli on it made by your sister. You also right now have an eggplant shirt. I think both made, made by, by your sister. sister. Yeah, yeah. She does my wardrobe for me, which is fun. She hand oh. sews all these and cuts them out. So they're all all uh, made with love. Oh, and that's I, beautiful. And we sell the broccoli shirts online. So if you get one at JustBlue.com, I'll sign it and ship it out to you. Oh, nice. That's awesome. I was planning on getting one myself. I wasn't sure about broccoli or eggplant. I think broccoli because that was my favorite vegetable. Well, and up. if you go on the site, there's a link to her page and you can actually request anything you want. So if you want some asparagus, you can get some or, or anything. She'll do meat. She don't care. Oh, okay. Okay. Like a yeah. little prime Anything rib. you think of. Yeah. Anything you think of. She's, she's good. Oh, damn. All right. Okay. Might have to go outside the, the pyramid here and go with something special. Okay. I'll think about that. While I do, though, I will let you go. And goodbye, listeners. Josh, thank you again. This was awesome. And I can't wait to see you perform this week. I think I'm going to go Friday. So. Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. Ton of new material from, from Broccoli. So, uh, yeah, that's a, lots of new, new stuff that you never heard before. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you, Josh. Thanks for we'll having talk me to on, you bro. soon.
Thank you. Bye. Good. Have a good one. Yeah. You bye. too. Bye bye.